Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of John Palmer Investigates, with me, your host, John Palmer. Now, a lot of those muck savages in RTE said that I'd never work again, especially after that interview uh, in Phoenix Park. Now, I don't hold a grudge, and I'm not one to hold one, so I'll simply say this. Those people had any problem with me. You didn't see me last year when I won three Golden Mike Awards for my portrayal in the wonderful documentary Handicapped People, Four-Wheeled Heroes, or people we don't really like. In fact, toothpaste is a dangerous and highly toxic substance which, when consumed by an unsuspecting member of the public, can often lead to unpredictable and often tragic side effects. Now, toothpaste contains the ingredient fluoride, which gives toothpaste its lovely, minty, cool flavor. What's the problem, you might ask? Where's the problem? Where's the harm? Is fluoride dangerous? Can fluoride lead to death? Well, that's the uh, startling and scary revelation from a recent report just published. Um, I went to see, that is I, John Palmer, went to talk to the leading makers of this death paste to see if it is, in fact, an actual harm to the nation. This is what they said to me. The amount of toothpaste needed to be ingested to constitute any risk to a person's health is approximately 25 tubes in a single 24-hour period. The chances of accidental intake of this quantity are so outrageously remote as to not warrant a health risk. Please do not write to us again or suffer the consequences of intense indiscretion. But that's that, you might say. Or is it? After the fobbing off I got from the toothpaste people, I, John Palmer, decided to conduct my own little test into the potential hazards of their product. I, John Palmer, wanted to know what it would be like if some poor, unfortunate member of society was to take such dangerous levels of fluoride. To this end, we took an illegal Ukrainian immigrant, Sergei Sukofagus, with extremely poor English and asked him to help us with our research. We systematically fed Sergi 25 tubes of Menti Bright over one day, and these are the horrifying results. We found Sergi was becoming nauseous after only five tubes of toothpaste. By the tenth, he was incoherent and confused, and by the time he reached 25, he had become mentally deranged and started to hallucinate. Sound familiar? Yes, we believe toothpaste may be responsible for rabies in animals. Stray dogs may have accidentally confused toothpaste for a tasty meal and only to become turned into killer beings by the fluoride contained within them. After showing this film to independent pharmaceutical expert, Dr. Dermot Sheedy, he had this to say. From my observations of Sergi's behavioral patterns after his high fluoride intake, I have concluded that toothpaste is directly responsible for every case of mental illness on record, and all supplies of this dangerous substance should be burned immediately. As we can see, upon further research, since the advent of toothpaste in the early 1800s, incidents of murder, rape and theft have risen drastically. Some of the 20th century's greatest monsters were said to have excellent oral hygiene. Adolf Hitler, Jack the Ripper, and Johnny Logan are believed to have brushed their teeth daily with toothpaste. It may, of course, be all coincidence, and any connection between death, brutal murders, and toothpaste, a statistical error. But can you take that chance? Can you afford to run the risk of losing your life and the life of your children and their children's lives? We here at John Palmer Investigates have access to the most lurid and obscene material in all of Ireland. Nothing ever shocks us, we've seen and heard it all. Yet, the other day we received a letter from a Miss Short from Clunshock. Now, it wasn't her letter that was particularly offensive. A couple of F words aside, no, it was the subject matter. It's the kind of thing, folks, that we like to shove to the back of our minds. The kind of thing we like to forget. The kind of thing we shove under the carpet, if you like. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, obscene fridge magnets. Bob, 
Where are we going? Mr. Short's house, Blanchard's town. Why are we there yet? Bob. Bob, why are we there yet? Answer. Well, we're nearly there. Well, nearly isn't good enough. In television, you got to be there on the spot. Bloody hell! What are you going to stop? Is that fine? of the people. I've come to this beautiful town to talk to Mrs. Short about the insidious problem that has rampant this town and shattered the innocents. <sighs> she only answered the goddamn door. I live in fear of it happening again. I've seen that word. Again, I feel dirty and sinful. I can't get these bad thoughts out of my mind. The thoughts of all those filthy words that might appear next. There's just so many. Whore, wench, shit fiddler, dickhead, fuckface, hairy bollocks, wang stain, crusty hole, cock ring laughter, prick teaser, blowjob. Witnessing the distressing state of Miss Short, I decided to come here to Germany, the motherland, to confront the offensive German company, German-based Riddenfraden, Frigentagen, Fritsch, Lagen, whatever, Yellow Pack. Now, unfortunately they were uncooperative and weren't willing to partake in this program, but they did have this to say. Hey! Nazi! The spell where Fritz Magnet series comes as a disassembled kit containing 26 letters of sein alphabet. It is intended for use as an educational aid for illiterate or retarded housewives. We accept no responsibility for accidental profanities that may occur during use. Deine Schmerzer Media Relations Department... Bob, get the van running! Come on, come on. Well, there you have it, short and sweet, just like the surrender in World War II. I, John Palmer, am urging prominent political figures that we declare war on Germany and his bosom and her, beg your pardon, her bosom allies. These offensive fridge magnets demand that we take retribution and crowd blood. Okay, Bob, let's go. Get the hell out of here. I've had enough to hear with this country. Get out. Come on. What's wrong? What's wrong, Bob? We've run out of petrol. Well, can we go get some? No. Not from here. Do you know what? You're pathetic. Do you know something else? You're fucking fired. Oh, go. Get out. Right. Okay. Now, I'll get it. Here, come on, guy. Let's go. Cut this shit. Come on, let's go. Where do you get a taxi in this stupid country? I thought I told you you were fired. Go. Go. So, uh, it's fine. I took get some petrol there, Bob. Yeah. Yeah, but you took your goddamn time, didn't you? It took us three miles to get where we were on foot. What do you got to say to that? I had to 
Walker. Uh, for you. What about us? That makes fair play for you. Yeah, well, fair play to you, you know. I mean, I was actually going to walk on. In fact, I wasn't going to walk to Germany, but I was going to walk substantially down the road. So you wouldn't mind moving your face in a way. I'm trying to talk to you about it. Are you looking at me, are you? Yeah, well, the future boss. I mean, when I want something, I want it done properly. I want it done on time, when I say, and the next time, I mean, I know they're listening to me, but the next time you embarrass me in front of the cast and crew, well, I, I'm the only cast, obviously, the crew, I, I will just have no, no problem with really firing you. The reason I didn't fire you is because I need you to get home. We're here today talking to Deirdre de Burke, uh, a councillor for the Green Party, which is located in County Wicklow. Deirdre, you're very welcome. The environment, are we abusing it? Uh, should we abuse it some more? And if so, how should we do it? Well, I don't think it's any exaggeration to say that we're in the middle of an environmental crisis at the moment. Now, the major political parties in this country don't seem to realise that. But as a member of the Green Party, I suppose, I have been very active in trying to draw attention to the fact that the way in which our economic activities particularly are impacting on the environment is having a very, very negative effect on both the quality of the air, water, um, you know, the way in which we're planning uh, land use and yeah. so on. So really, I don't think it's any exaggeration to say we are in the middle of an environmental crisis. Uh, Glen of the Downs, is it uh, all bollocks? Well, I was very involved in the Glen of the Downs campaign right. and obviously I didn't want to see the road being widened and the trees being cut in the Glen. But um, I think what that it was just an example of is the way that we prioritise economic development over, you know, protecting the mm -hmm. natural environment. Uh, would you strap yourself to a tree for money, for sex? I was tempted at times, but I suppose as a politician it wouldn't exactly yeah. be seen to be appropriate and there were plenty of other people to do it, so I took more of a, I suppose, a PR role. Uh, Deirdre, I'm a, a big, big fan of litter. You're obviously not into litter, but what would you say to somebody like me who is in fact into litter and who likes spitting and, you know, doing that stuff? What would you say to somebody if I spat on the ground? Is that dirty well, in the environment? if you look around you and look at the levels of litter that you can see, just you know in the immediate surroundings it's obvious that Irish people are not there we live in a throwaway society people are disposing of their waste without even thinking about the effect that it's having on the environment the Green Party are the only political party that are offering a genuine alternative to the people of Ireland if you look at the other parties it's impossible to say what the difference is between the Labour Party Fianna Gael Fianna Fáil their main their overriding I suppose priority seems to be economic growth and it really doesn't seem to matter who's in power. Policies don't change that much. The Green Party is offering a genuine alternative. One of the most radical things that the Green Party is um, advocating is local democracy, which is, again, taking a lot of power away from politicians, away from local authorities, and giving it back to people. So in other words, giving people a say in how their local communities are run. Um, Deirdre, here's your big helmet. Put it on your head there now and fuck off. Thanks very much. Don't forget, stick it in your pipe and smoke it, you hippie! Jesus, Bob. Fucking eco warriors. They're all the same here. Do you know what I was thinking? Do you know what I was thinking? Let's ram the bitch. Let's ram <laughs> Palmer, he's back. 14 suck. Oh god, Bob, look at that, look at that arse. Oh lovely. I could I could walk her. It must have been love, but it's over now. There is a bitch in a car. I am John Palmer, investigator, reporter, channel six. If you don't know me, you don't know squat. That's the way it is. 
that's the way I like it, and I also like my pies paisley. Not just cheap shit pot, but paisley. Thank you. You've been lovely. Good night. You know, I really am the best goddamn investigative reporter there is. Ask anyone, they'll tell you. Especially ask that guy, John Palmer. Eh, uh, in fact, ask one of my Golden Mike Awards and they'll tell you how goddamn good and brilliant I am. But, you know, Golden Mike Awards, even though they're good, they're not that great. Because I'm better. I'm keeping with everything. I'm about to explode onto your TV screens. The other TV people, they got rid of me. They said, who did they say to me? They said my smile wasn't cheesy enough. <laughs> Bloody well is. I'm gonna have the best show that ever was, and ever is. And you know what everyone? You can go and fuck yourself. Cause I am John Palmer. I hope you join me next week in the following weeks for wonderful, wonderful programming. Because if it ain't John Palmer investigates, it ain't TV programming.